Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to show you how to create custom printer profiles for ISSL. So the first thing we need to do is locate the GCO directory for uh, uh, ISSL. So the way we do that is we first look, go to Drive C and look for the program file directory. With inside the program file directory, what we need to do is find the INERA directi directory. I'll spit that out, I-N-R-I-A. With inside there, we'll see the ICE SL directory. From there, when we look inside there, we'll see a number of other directories and files. The particular one we want to find is G code. Once G code is opened, we'll see a list of other directories of existing printer profiles. Now, for ease of use, what we're going to do is simply repurpose uh, one of those printer profiles. Now, for me in particular, my printers in general are Prusa i3 style. So as we see here, we have a Prusa i3 base template. So what we're going to do is we're going to click uh, copy, and then what we're going to do is click paste. Now, since this is in the program uh, directory or the Windows directory, it is going to ask or require administrative privileges in Windows 10. So you need to have administrator privileges to make these changes. I know it's a pain, but hey, thank you, Redmond. Anyways, uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and click here. Now, this plays a bit of havoc with my screen recorder, so I'm going to have to do some splicing to work past this. So just as you notice some gaps, that's the only reason why. So I'm going to go ahead and click Continue. And now, since we're back from our little Windows Administrator adventure, you'll see up here we have a copy of the Perusa file. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rename this to be our printer. So for this, I'm going to call it Test 3D. Now, again, changing the name will also require administrative privileges, so we're going to have to go back through that rigmarole once again. And so we'll click Continue. Okay, with that done, what we'll do is double-click on this directory, opening it up, and we'll see three files, or three files, come on, Joe, four files. And so we have Features Lua, we have Printer Lua, we have Footer G-Code, and we have header G code. So the first one I want to focus on uh, is features Lua. So this is a Lua file, a Lua program file. And what we're going to do is we'll open it with a text editor. So uh, as you can see here from the little plus sign, I, I have it associated with one of my text editors all, already. So I'm just going to go ahead and click uh, on it to open. So we're going to see a couple different things here. So the first thing we're going to see up here is the version, which I just leave it at the version one. The next important thing we're going to see here is the bed size. So I'm going to change this bed to 200 by 200 by 200. And so, so now I've got a standard basically 8 inch bed defined with an 8 inch vertical movement. The next thing is nozzle size. So 0.4, that's my nozzle size. I'm happy with it. I'm going to keep it. Extruder count. In this case, I only have one extruder on the printer, so I'm going to leave it at one. I do have a DaVinci 2 with two. If you have multiple extruders, here's where you would want to set it. Uh, the next thing is um, Z offset. You know, for example, if you haven't adjusted your bed for, say, a three millimeter glass sheet or whatever, this is where you would enter it. I don't have that, so I'm going to leave that at zero. So priming millimeters per second is at 40. So uh, it's going to move at 40 millimeters per second while priming, which is fine with me. I'm okay with that. Might kick it up to 50, but I'm going to leave it at 40 for the sake of discussion right now. Now, here is the next interesting one. So this is Z layer height, uh, minimum and maximum. Now, where this is especially uh, interesting is for... Um, setting the uh, height, uh, especially during adaptive layering in optimization. So you'll notice that this goes all the way down to 0 0.05, and then this goes up to nozzle diameter millimeters, which nozzle diameter millimeters up here is 0.4 times 0.75. So this can get to be a pretty big uh, range. So what I typically do is I set this to 0.1, and then I just leave the top basically set, set as it is. So this means my smallest layer height will be 0.1 millimeters, um, which getting less than that, which the, the prior uh, number was about half of that, uh, I, I just don't see as effective. So I'm setting at 0.1 and leaving the top as it is. 
So print speed. Um, so minimum print speed is five, maximum is 80. So this is gonna set parameters inside the uh, application for you. So I think both of those are good. I typically go 50, 60, so on most of my printers. So that's uh, goodness there. Uh, the next piece is bed temperature. So minimum is zero, maximum is 120. Again, I'm going to accept these parameters because they're pretty much standard. Uh, the next thing is uh, perimeter print speed per millimeter, 5 and 80. Again, I'm going to leave these as they are because for me they're acceptable. Uh, first layer print speed, uh, 10, which is setting the default for first layer. Um, and again, here for uh, print speed per second minimum is 1. And again, I'm kind of odd that they put sort of the maximum or the configured norm at the top above min but then they have maximum of 80. So this this I believe is the standard so this is going to be the default for first layer is 10. I, I think 10 is rather slow. I'm going to kick this up to 30 and then uh, it, minimum is going to be 1, maximum is going to be 80. So I'm good with that. Now the next piece down here in this little for loop, Lua for loop, uh, is an important one. So pretty much all these are good for me, but I'm going to cover them out for you guys. So the first one is 0.175 is going to be our filament diameter. That's pretty much normal for this printer. Unless you have an Ultimaker or something that uses three millimeter filament, 0.175 should work for you. Uh, the next piece is filament priming. So it's going to be four millimeters. Uh, again, I pretty much accept that. Default temperatures is set for 210, typical high-end PLA. Uh, and again, minimum extruder temperature here is set for 150, maximum is 270, and I'm going to accept that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this configuration out, and boom, done. Now, you may get a request to uh, for administrator privileges, since I'm already logged in as administrator with this application. It just simply let me save it. All right, so now this piece is done. We've uh, finished the piece for the features. The next piece we're going to take a look at is actually um, header G-code. Now, header G-code, this is going to be the G-code which is going to launch or be put at the header of the body of your G-code that the slicer is going to create. In general, most of what I see here is, is fine. What you may want to add here is if you have uh, particular PIDs that you want to adjust on the fly or something like that for your printer, you'll make the adjustments here. I'm not going to make any adjustments here and just accept it as it is. I'm not going to worry about saving it out. The next one is footer G-code. Now this one you, you have to pay a little bit more attention to. Uh, because this is going to do a couple different things and you may want to make some more modifications to this. So the big one right here is this one, G28. So I'm going to put X space Y for G28. I want to do a capital Y. So what happens is G28 is the home command. And if you issue G28 without any additional parameters, like the X and the Y, it's going to also home the Z. So it's going to attempt to bring the head back down to a zero Z or a Z offset position, which could be a problem because at the end of your print, you have this model on your bed and you can run your head into it. I'm not sure why they exactly did this. So what's going to happen is this is going to leave Z or should leave Z where it's at and then X and Y will be homed. So it will go back to a home position in that plane. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this off. And so that's all good. And uh, at the end, we disable stepper motor. So again, you might want to add some extended cooldown periods, something else here, but this is where you go ahead and do it. All right, last but not least is Printer Lua. So Printer Lua, you're not going to really do much here. Uh, this really is sort of the uh, Lua engine for creating the body of your G-code based upon the slice parameters of your STL or your model file. Um, you can kind of see here, and I'm not going to go through each and every one of these, but you can see the uh, function header, 
uh, here creates the header G code, the tool temperature. So in other words, it's going to produce the G code in a format that your printer is going to understand. I do not suggest modifying this unless you know what you're doing both uh, with, with the Lua code and second with um, uh, you know, G code in general. So this is going to affect, it. and this is one of the main reasons you want to uh, to select a profile which is compatible with your general printer. Now I want to go back for a second, and so if I go back over here to my my printers, what you'll see is you know we have Replicator, uh, you know we have Replicator 2x, we have RepRap, we have an ICE Delta configuration. And so you have most of the base uh, 3D printer configurations to work with. So you really don't have to get too worked up about printer Lua in this case. So, okay, we've now created this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start our um, uh, ISSL application. That's what we're going to do. That's a little bit early in the morning. Okay, so we've uh, now started uh, ISSL Slicer. And we've come up here and we notice that uh, Test3D, which is the printer we just set up, is in the list. And if we look at the parameters, for example, nozzle size, bed size, we have that all down here. And we're ready to slice. Now, a little bit of a heads up, uh, maybe cautionary tale here, especially with Windows 10, if you're using this on, on Windows. Um, Sometimes the permissions, you know, it will appear as in this, the original segment where we made changes to the file that uh, uh, the changes were made. But a lot of sometimes Windows, even if you give it permission, will not make the right since it is a program or Windows directory. So you sometimes have to double check it. So if you come back over here and you see that the changes have not been made, I'd suggest restarting your computer, making sure you're logged in as admin to make the changes. I know this is a rather bit of a pain, and I think I'm going to open up um, something with uh, uh, the Anira folks and, and kind of mention that or see if there's a bug report on it. Um, because again, I think this is a, a problem. I haven't, I don't see this on Windows 7, but I have experienced this on Windows 10. It's a little bit more particular about making changes to the program file directory. Uh, but if you do run into that problem, again, reboot, make sure you're logged in as administrator. You're not changing from user to administrator or put yourself in the administrator group. So sorry if it becomes a little bit of a Windows tutorial here, but that's just sort of the world we live in with Windows. Anyways, hopefully you found this interesting and useful. If you did, hey, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget, uh, Swag Shop is going to be up in the right-hand corner, and Subscribe Button is going to be in the lower right-hand corner. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you're having issues or whatever, just hit me up below, and I'll see if I can not help you out. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.